Hey everybody, welcome back to another uh, episode in our course on data structures and algorithms. Today I want to talk about sorting arrays. There are many different algorithms that we can use to sort arrays. Today I'd like to look at three of those algorithms uh, that I consider to be more basic sorting algorithms. We'll discuss the advantages and disadvantages of each algorithm. And then, in the next lesson, we'll look into some more advanced sorting algorithms. Okay, so this is uh, my web page. It's a, uh, you can see it's uh, the Google site address, and I'll, keep, I'll put the address in the uh, description for this video. You can also just Google Jed Wilshire, and this usually comes up. So if you go to the Computer Science tab, and this is my advanced computer science, and here we are in unit one. Now we're using most all of these things, but not all of them. So, so there's uh, additional projects and you can download the book that I've uh, been working on for the unit one book. But for our video series, we're just gonna jump straight here today to selection sort viewer, insertion sort viewer, and bubble sort viewer. So I'm just gonna download each one of those cl classes And I'll just save them to my download since we're going to be importing them into our BlueJ. Now, when we're studying algorithms, the first thing we want to do is develop an intuitive understanding of how it works. Then we want to go a little deeper and be able to understand it even step by step. So we get kind of a broad overview first, then we dive in and really understand step by step. And only when you completely understand each step of an algorithm is it time for you to start trying to actually write the code. So that's where we'll begin. All right, so I've got a Blue Jay project open. I'm just calling sorts, and I'm gonna say um, add class. So I'll go to edit, add class from file. And I should have them here. I got my quick sort, selection sort, and insertion sort. All right, so that's, I'm just going to go ahead and add them all that we'll need. And hopefully you'll do the same. Okay, the first one I want to talk about is the selection sort. I think selection sort is the most easy algorithm to understand. It's also the way that I find people who just, if I ask a student or someone to come up with an algorithm to sort an array uh, or a, a stack of cards, this is the one that people tend to come up with and think of on their own. Let's take a look at it by running the JavaFX application. You can just say use JavaFX thread and it should come up here. Okay, so uh, in this particular algorithm viewer, we have the numbers 1 through 16. I'm going to click on the shuffle icon and shuffle them. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to step through the algorithm, and each step is going to accomplish one task. And what you should see the algorithm do is step through the numbers and start at the very first index, which is index zero, and we're going to start there, and we're going to find the smallest number. Whatever is the smallest number we found so far, we're going to mark in red. We're, the current index we're looking at, we're going to mark in yellow. If we ever come to something where the yellow index is less than the red, the yellow will become the new red. Let's take a look. So, as you could see, it stepped through and the one became the smallest number. So on this next one, you're going to see, uh, let's step through it again. We're going to start at six as our smallest, then five will become, then three, then two. So keep in mind, watch how it does the comparisons and finds them. And once it's done finding it, it swaps what's there with what index we're starting on. Okay, so we found the minimum index for one. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the minimum for index two. So we're going to start right here where the 16 is. The smallest number still remaining should be a 3. So you'll notice that we'll start with 16 as our guess, which will move to 5, and then become 3. 
Once we're going done going through the entire array, you should see the 16 swap places with the 3. Okay? And step through the algorithm and see how it does it. Notice it's called selection sort because we're simply selecting the best candidate. Uh, also take note that each iteration starts at the index that we're finding the, the right value for. So I'm finding the correct value for index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 right now. That 7 is in index 4. So that's where I start. If I started over here, I wouldn't find the right value. So I start there. I found the 5. So the 5 and the 7 switch. And play with that algorithm so you really feel that you understand it. Uh, write it down, do it on paper, use index cards if you want. And then what I want you to do is I want you to create the code for it. So let's make a class. And we're just going to call this class basic sorts. All right, so public class basic sorts. And we'll make this a static method. And we're going to call this one selection sort. It's going to take in an integer array. And of course, we don't have to sort just integer arrays. We can sort uh, any array of objects that implement the comparable interface. So they have to be, you have to have a compare to or be supplied with what's called a comparator. Uh, we will look at that more. For now, we're just trying to study the algorithm. Let's use ints, they're easy to understand. All right, so at this time, I want you to pause the video. I want you to write this algorithm. If you need it for just one more chance to review, download this selection sort viewer, really study how it works. Think about how it starts at the, each index and finds the smallest value from that point to the end. All right. Okay, let's see how you did. Okay, let's see how you did. So lots of different ways that we could write this. This is the way I see it. All right, so I'm going to loop through each position like you saw in the uh, program. And you will start at zero, and then we'll go through each one one at a time, finding the absolute perfect value. Or more specifically, we're going to find the index of that perfect value. So I'm going to call this min index, and I'm going to start with my guess. My guess is that the index i is the minimum number. We always start with that as our guess. And then we progress down from that point i all the way down to the end and see if we find anything better. So I'm going to use my another loop and I'm going to start this loop at i plus 1. You could start it at i, it wouldn't make that big a difference, but I've already got i as my min index, so we'll just start in the next one after it. And I'll loop through the entire array. And if I come across a place where the kth index of the array is less than the min index of the array. So if I come to a value, an index, I should say k, where the value at that index is less than what I currently think is the index of the smallest value, I need to change what my smallest index is pointing to. So then I will change min index to be k. All right. So once I get to this line here, after that for loop, we can assume that min index is pointing at the smallest value from i to the end of the array. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the ith position and that. But I'm going to use a, another method for that. So I'm going to write a swap method. And I'll leave it private because I don't want other people calling this. Private static void swap that takes in an array. And maybe you didn't use a helper swap method, and you don't have to if you don't want to, but I just I like to do that. So that it's simply going to make a temp variable to store the value at index A. Then I'll write over that value at A with the value at B. And then I'll store the value at B with that value that used to be at A, which was stored in temp. All right, so I find it makes it just your, your algorithms a little bit more readable. 
So I'm going to say swap in the array array. I want you to swap index i with min index. So it's going to swap those values. And when we're done with all from with all of the i's, we should be done. Let's give it a try. Okay, so to test it here, I'm just going to make a, a new array here on my little interactive shell. So I'll say new int, and uh, it's a good idea to always put in some negative numbers, some zeros. Uh, make sure you have a repeat number because sometimes when you write an algorithm, you might not handle re uh, values that are equal very well. And just as many as you think you might want to test. And then close off your curly brace there and don't put a semicolon because if you don't put a semicolon then you it gives you this option to just pull it over to your workbench and anytime you want to make another copy of that array because after I sort this array it'll be sorted I can just press go over here and press the up arrow on my keyboard and it brings it up again and I can make a new one that's not sorted okay so we'll go right click on basic sorts and you can see our static method here is available uh, well, actually, before I do that, let's make sure if you double click on the array, you'll see the first number is the length. And here are my numbers. We should have these sorted from least to greatest when we're done. Okay, let's check it out. All right, looks good. Okay, so that's selection sort. Let's describe what the big O of selection sort is. And in order to do that, let's go and run the application one more time to get a feel for it. Then let's run the viewer, and then let's look at our algorithm and see how that works out. So with this selection sort, you can notice how I'm looping that little yellow image, that border is looping through every single one of these numbers. So if there's n numbers in the array, it's definitely going, going to go through all of them, right, the first time. The second time, I start at the second number and I go through all of the numbers to find the second value. Then I start at the third, I index two, but I started the third number in the data and I loop through to find it. So what's happening is that we are going to do a loop n times. And the first time we do the loop, we do, we do that another n times. Then we do it in n minus one times. Then we do it in minus two, etc. So the average, th this loop here, this loop here will loop n times if you look at, looking at the code. So we know that that that, that i value is going to take on all n values. This is going to take on a little bit less. It's going to, it's, this will be one step on the min index equals one, and then this will be about in the first time, and then it'll be in minus one and in minus two. So each time it's going to get shorter. That, that last time, when I get down to the end of, of this algorithm, that last loop, see, it's still taking a while to go through there, right? as it finds the smallest value. By the time I get to the end, this is gonna behave a lot quicker. You can almost sense that it's gonna get faster because there's just less numbers to go through. But what's the average amount of numbers that I have to go through? Well, right now I'm right about at that average value. At this moment, I'm gonna to have to loop through half of those numbers. So, you know, sometimes we loop, that second loop goes through all the numbers, other times I'm gonna go through one. The average is n over two. So this is an average of n over two times. So we're going to be looping n over two times on average. And how many times we're going to do it? n times. So I need to multiply. I'm going to be multiplying n over two times n, which gives me O of n squared over two. But do you remember, we don't get to use the over two. It's just O of n squared. So that's the time complexity that we have for the selection sort. What does that mean? That means that if I took, let's say I had the, it took me two seconds to sort some array of size n. 
If I double the size of that array, make it twice as long, well, how long is it going to take me now? Not twice as long, four times as long, right? And if I triple the length of that array, it's going to take me um, nine times as long. So if, if it took me two seconds to sort it now, and then I triple it, well, now we're talking 18 seconds. So the growth and the amount of time it takes this algorithm to complete is actually quite um, intense, this n squared. It's, it's, it's going to slow it down as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, let's take a look at our next algorithm. So uh, the next one I want us to look at is in search and sort. Okay, so this algorithm here is a little bit more complicated to understand. I always think about it when if I was playing um, a card game like Spades or Bridge or or something like that. When when I pick up my cards as I'm dealt, I put them I put them in order as I pick them up. And that's kind of what this is. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine we're going to pick up one, one of these numbers at a time and put them in order. So that when we get to, say, the, the seventh number in the array, the first six are sorted in and of themselves. And then we'll insert that next one in the right location. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this one works. So what it says is it's finding the position for nine. And it found it. Okay. So we one thing I want to point out is we start at the second index. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the position for this four. So what's going to happen is we're going to insert it where it needs to go. So we should see the four go in front of the six, then the six, then the nine. Don't worry about how it's doing it. We're going to come back and get that. I want you to see, get a feel for it first, and we'll go into a little bit more detail. All right, now we're going to insert the 11. Where should it go? It should end up right where it was. So as you can see here, it describes it found this position. Okay, next we need to put the 5 in order. Where should the 5 go? In between the 4 and the 6, right? So we should see 4, 5, 6, 9, 11 when we're all done. Perfect. Now we're going to put the 16. Well, out of these numbers here in red, the 16 should just stay where it is. All right, now we'll put the 7 in order. It should go in between the 6 and the 9. Okay, put the 15 in order. Okay, we'll put the 8 in order now. And as you're watching this, you might begin to start wondering, wondering how it's doing this. You might notice that there's a little something unusual about it. Still finding the position for the three. All the way to the front. Okay. All right, let's find a position for the ten now. All right, the thirteen should go after the eleven. Oh boy, now we gotta put the one in order, which means we're gonna have to go, we're gonna travel all the way to the front here. Looking for the right place. Look constantly looking for the place to put the one. How do we know when we found the right place to put it though? Well, that's the right place for it, right? Okay, let's try the two. How do we know when the two is in the right place? Well, as we keep going down here, as soon as we find a value that is lower than 2, or if we've gone all the way to the beginning of the array, we should stop. So 4 is not lower than 2, 3 is not lower than 2, but the 1 is lower than the 2, so I stop and I put the 2 behind the 1. Make sense? Let's try the 12, and we'll look at, we'll look at this again in a second. We'll go through this again. And there we have it, they're all sorted. All right, let's shuffle them again. Okay, so I think it's easiest to understand this algorithm after you've kind of gotten in the middle of it. At the beginning, it, it kind of disappears so quickly. So I'm just gonna step this through a few times and then, uh, well, we need to talk about the one. So let's talk about that. All right, so we're gonna, 
at this point here, I've got 7, 11, and 14 are sorted. You can see that the, the 7 was the last thing that I put in. And now we're going to put the 1 in order. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the 14 that's in front of the 1 over to the 1. Now the one's gone, right? It's not in our array anymore. In fact, we have two 14s. Maybe you noticed that earlier that there was each time as we moved down the array, we were having a duplicate number. So the one's going to need to be held somewhere. We're going to have to keep a reference to that value of one. Okay. And I'm going to copy the 14 over. Then I'm going to, because one is still smaller than 11, I'll copy the 11 over. And then since one is still smaller than seven, I'll copy the seven over. See if you can see that happen. Copy the 14, copy the 11, copy the seven. There's nothing else to copy over. We need to stop there and put the one. All right, there's the 12, copy over the 14. 12 is not smaller than 11, so we stop there. Okay, the eight's gonna be a good one for us to watch. So watch how the, we're gonna look at the value in front of the eight. We're gonna decide that 14 is greater than eight, copy it over, copy it over. And we're gonna keep copying things over once we found a number where the number in a position where the value in front of it is not greater than eight, you'll see us place the eight down. So for a moment, we have duplicates. We have two 12s, two 11s, but then we paste that eight over that first 11. So now we no longer have that duplicate. Okay, so I want you to give your best shot trying to write this algorithm. Download the application if you haven't already and try and, and, and figure it out. Okay, let's say you did. So again, we're going to be looping through all the indices of the array. Do you notice that we still have to do a process? There's going to be a loop within a loop. So I'm going to start at an index and then do a process. Uh, but for this one, we actually started at the second index. So I'm going to use a for loop and I'll start at index one. And we need to keep track of the value that's there. So I'll say val is equal to array bracket i. Then what I'm going to say is, let's make an index. Int index equals i. I'll say while index is greater than 0 and array bracket index minus 1 is greater than the value, then I need that index to decrease. Well, I also have to copy over. Let's do, I didn't do that. So array bracket index will equal array bracket index minus one. So what we're saying here is that while the value before our current index is bigger than the value we're trying to insert, then we're gonna copy it backwards and decrease our index. When we're all done, we should just simply have to place our value at the correct index. So I will say array bracket index is equal to value. When the value is already in the right place, so uh, for example, let's, take, let's just pretend we were about to put the 14 in its place right here. Well, then i is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our value would become 14. Our index would be a 5. And then 12 is not greater than 14, so we wouldn't do this. And we would just put that value right back where we were. Okay? But let's take a look at when we do have a value to do. So let's say that we're putting the uh, 13 in order. So in this case, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, in this case, i is 6. So value becomes, val becomes 13. Index becomes 6. And array bracket 6 minus 1. So that's the 14. 
is greater than the 13, so I would copy this over. And this, so I'd have a 14 here and here, but then index would become a five. Then I'll check if 12 is bigger than 13, because remember, we're not checking with 14, checking with 13, and I'll find that it's not, so that tells me to just go ahead and paste my value there, and we can actually watch that happen. So there's the 14 copy over, then the 13 gets pasted. All right, so let's test it. So like I said earlier, you can just go up here and what? copy that if it doesn't pull down. And here we go. And it should bring give us a new array since we said new. And if I double click on it, you'll see it's not sorted. Go to my basic sorts. This time I'll choose the insertion sort. Click on the array. And it should be sorted. And it is. Perfect. Okay, let's discuss the big up. Well, um, there's a best case and worst case that we need to consider here. Uh, I think if we look at the sorts again, if you look at the selection sort, you'll notice that there's no while or anything like that. I mean, this loop is going to happen in times. This loop is going to happen on average in over two. It's, it's never going to be different. If I try and run selection sort with a sorted array, it's going to take just as long as with the most messed up jangly array you can imagine. And whereas with the insertion sort, when you come to a value that is bigger than all the values that have already been inserted, that step happens very quickly. So <clears throat> where I am here, this two is going to happen really slowly. You can see it's just slowly copying over. Well, it's slow because I have the animation set to that speed. You can change it if you want to make it faster. But here's the 15. Let's see how long it takes it to be put in the right place. The two took a while. The 15 was done basically instantly, right? And then the 10 will take a little while longer. So there's a big difference in the time that it takes to do this algorithm based on whether or not the number that you're about to insert has to move way down or not. If I give the algorithm an array that's already sorted, then basically it's going to loop through each one and then and do nothing each time. It's going to say, okay, here I am in index one, you're good. Index two, you're good. Index three, you're good. No copying, no shifting, right? Here we are again on the 16. It's done like that. So we see that there is a best case scenario. So I'm going to say best case, we have what's called ON. Now, if you can sort something in ON time, that is super fast. Uh, but it's not actually sorting it. It's just detecting that it is already sorted. But the average case and worst case is O in squared. Because on average, I think we could say that if the, if the array is just completely random, that yes, like with the 16, it doesn't have to do much, but with the, the six that I'm on now, it has to move quite a bit. So on average, for an average number that could occur, we're gonna have to shift on average half the elements in the array. So this outer loop here, we know is gonna happen in times. The inner loop here is gonna happen and it's gonna average in over two steps. This is gonna average, this will be in steps every time. And if we multiply in over 2 times in, we get in squared over 2, and we ignore the over 2. All right, let's do one more basic sort. Let's take a look at the bubble sort. Bubble sort is fun. Each one of these sorts have um, reasons why I think it's important to learn them. And uh, insertion sort is one where it's very effective to use an insertion sort at certain times. And the bubble sort has kind of a technique called bubbling that we'll use later on in some other algorithms. So it's a good one to learn as well. All right, 
And um, I think Bubble Sword is cute. It's fun to watch. Um, <laughs> hopefully you enjoy it as well. So the basic idea is that what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the array. And we're going to swap any two items that are out of order. And we're going to keep doing that until the array is sorted. And we'll know it's sorted if we don't do any swaps. All right, so for this algorithm, we, I shuffle the integers, and I'm going to click on the, on the bubble. And what you're going to see is you're going to see this um, animation where we're going to loop through the array. And if we find two items that are out of order, we'll watch them swap by flashing colors. So you can see there's, those are swapping. When there's nothing to swap, it'll just kind of skip on. But notice that when I reached the 16, did you notice that? It swapped every single time. So once I reached that largest value, it kept swapping the whole time. All right, let's try it again. Okay, so it goes pretty fast until it finds two items that are out of order. Now we're at the 15. 15 is the biggest value. It's always gonna, what we call, bubble up. So when you're doing a bubble sort, notice that we're actually sorting from the back. We're sorting from the back, but because of the way that I swap, notice that numbers like the 3 and the 4 and the 2 and the 7 and the 5 and the 1, they're slowly moving further and further forward as we go. So we're so every sort, every time I press that bubble, I'm getting the largest value that hasn't yet been selected in the back. So in a way, this is kind of like selection sort, but I'm selecting the largest value and bubbling it up. But while I'm doing that, I'm actually helping myself by moving the other stuff further forward. Yeah, we should see the three move up in front of the nine this time. And on the next time, that three is gonna move in front of the eight. So a lot of this stuff is gonna be kind of pre-sorted on the left as I'm getting sorted on the right. And one of the, neat, the things about bubble sort is that you you don't really know how many times you're going to have to bubble. You're done bubbling when you go through the entire array and no swaps are made. So typically you keep track of like a Boolean value called like keep swapping or keep bubbling. And you set that bubbling to true every time you've made a swap. So if it's already true, you just set it to true again. Um, but if you never set it to true, you know you're done. So just like the insertion sort, if you ask a bubble sort to sort a sorted array, you're going to be able, it's going to be done. It'll be done in one pass through of all in items. So that's O in for a best case. So again, that's an advantage of bubble sort is that it, it knows when it's sorted and ends quickly. Other some sorts like selection sort will always take the same amount of steps every time, whether it's sorted or not. getting faster now as more and more items are sorted we're just kind of finally moving that one into the correct place all right now one of the things that's interesting is we've got a sorted array but we don't know it yet so I need to bubble one more time but no flashing colors nothing and then you can see I've got the bubble turned off so um, that means it's sorted can you write a bubble sort Pause the video, give it your best shot, and then we'll check back together and see how you did. All right, let's see how you did. So with, with bubble sort, as we mentioned, we need to have a uh, Boolean that says keep sorting. So I'm going to make a Boolean and I'll call it keep swapping maybe or keep keep going. That's what I like to call it. That's it. Keep going. And, and I'm going to start with it as true because I need to bubble sort at least once, right? So I'll say while keep going. While keep going is true. we're going to do the bubble sorting. So in this situation here, we're going to loop through 
and we're going to see if there's ever two things that need to be swapped. So for each iteration though, I'm going to assume that I don't need to go anymore. So I'm immediately going to set keep going to false because at the start of each iteration, let's we haven't made any swaps. So we've made no swaps, so we don't need to keep going. And we start at the beginning every time. We do the entire length of the array every time. Um, well, actually, you know what? Let's start at index one since I have to. I either need to start at index one and go through array length minus one, or start and start at. Uh, I either need to start at zero and go through length minus one, or start at one and go through the length. So I'll start at one, and I'm going to say if the array bracket i minus one. So we're starting at the first index. Uh, we're starting at index one, which is the, the second number. If the number in front of that is is bigger, then we know that it's out of order, right? It's out of order. What do we need to do? Swap them. So I'll use my little um, static swap method here to swap those two values. But what else needs to happen? Well, if I call swap, that means that I've made a swap that needs to be set back to true. And that's it. Let's try it out. Got frozen, hold that. There it is. Okay. All right, there's my array again. You can see it is uh, not sorted. I'll go to my basic sorts, and I've got bubble sort now available. And we'll select it. And voila, we are good to go. So that is bubble sort. Let's talk about its ON. We've already seen that because of that keep going, that if we give it a sorted array, it's not going to go, it's just gonna go through it one time, it's going to traverse each um, index, see that there's no swapping, and it won't keep going. So again, we got this best case of ON. That best case, of course, is pretty rare. That's only if you try and sort something that's sorted already. But let's talk about the average case. Now, this, this can be a little confusing for some people because there's really, it looks like we're looping through every the entire array except for the first value. I mean, this is, this is definitely in or you know in minus one but we can ignore the minus one but when does this stop so this is definitely in steps here but how many is that i mean earlier we've always seen that outer loop be in values right or in steps but this one here i mean essentially it seems like it could it could, might go on forever but that's not the case uh, if you go back and let's look at that bubble sort viewer one more time to remind ourselves why we know that this outer while keep going cannot be more than in. And the reason why is that when I do this bubble, watch the 16. Okay, we've reached the 16. Now the 16 keeps swapping. And because nothing is bigger than the 16, that 16 will bubble all the way to the end. So after each bubble, which is like the while loop, the largest value must be at the back. So I can say with certainty that this is not going to happen more than n times. Maybe it won't take n times, but it certainly won't be more than. It. And if I multiply n times n, we get n squared. So our average case is O n squared. Okay, so those are the basic sorts. Our next couple of sorts we're gonna look at are more advanced. We'll be looking at two recursively written sorts called merge sort and quick sort. All right, well, I'll see you then.